It was never painted black, turned into a Fillmore South by Bill Graham. It wasn't turned into a rock room or a disco. It stayed a movie theater and live performance theater for the 92 years it's been here. Tampa Theater has been here in the heart of downtown Tampa since October 15th, 1926. The part that people see is, is the beauty and the grandeur that Eberson designed. But of course, as a functioning theater that's been operating for 91 years, of course, we have all these wonderful little nooks and crannies where all the smoke and mirrors are kept. Uh, and that's why we have great people like our stage manager, Lloyd, uh, who has crawled over every inch of this building and knows where all of the switches and all of the plugs are to to keep everything running how it's supposed to. This right here, this is the main switchboard. Uh, 1926, Frank Adams Electric, Chicago, Illinois, John Eberson Architect, all documented here. For 92 years, when you sat down in your seats and the movie started, we took house lights down here, we turned off the relays, came this direction, Anything else that needed to be reset for house lights would happen here. And then you would open the drape. Projectionist would open the gate on the projector and start the film. That walk back and forth happened for 92 years. Beyond its incredible architecture, um, beyond the fact that we still have most of our original fixtures and furniture and everything else that makes this a, a very authentic piece of 1920s history, uh, there are a couple of other elements to the building that really make it special, really make it stand out, uh, not only here in Florida, but literally in the world when compared to other historic theaters. Uh, one of those things is right behind me on the stage vintage 1926 wind-driven Wurlitzer pipe organ with sound effects for theater and for silent film. All right, standby organ, standby lights, ready and go. A hole in the stage, an organ console, and a scissor lift, and a really cool reveal. Simple tricks. Now back in the 20s, of course, movies were silent. Uh, the first talkie didn't come around until 1927, but actually we didn't get our first talkie as a Paramount Theater until 1929. So for the first three years we existed, we had a 21-piece orchestra that would accompany the films, and then this Mighty Wurlitzer Theater organ that if we didn't want to bring in the whole orchestra, we could bring in one musician who could play that entire film. So we total about 1,400 organ pipes right now. Um, and they're actually concealed behind the walls. Uh, if you can see those false balconies, uh, each of those is an organ chamber where all of those pipes are housed. Getting in there during the piece, finding the pipe that's sounding uncontrollably, capping it, and making sure the organist doesn't have to play around that one note. Welcome to the stage left, house right organ chamber. This is where the noise making stuff is. The console downstairs basically opens and closes valves under each of these pipes and the pipe will sound. This is where the noise comes from. There's shutters back here that open and close to control volume. Right now they're shut and this is, all the sound will be stuck in here with us if we're playing. It gets pretty loud in here. There's a lot of places things are hard to get to. In this chamber, we've got uh, flute pipes, reed pipes, and some metal, you know, wood flute and metal flute pipes, different timbers, different pitches. This is a flute pipe. And we have some other reed pipes here that are a bit smoother than that first one. And let's find a metal flute pipe. Oops, come here. She is sticky. It actually doesn't want to come out. We'll try this one. We also have effects. And these are all triggered off of the Wurlitzer console.
One of the signature elements in John Eberson's atmospheric theaters is, of course, that night sky above us. So when you come see a movie at Tampa Theater, it really feels like you're sitting outdoors in a Mediterranean courtyard with twinkling stars overhead. People ask us all the time, how do you change the light bulbs? How in the world do you get up to those stars when one of them burns out? And the genius of John Eberson's design really shines uh, when you see that he built above the night sky a series of catwalks and a, a workspace, basically. So instead of having to haul out the ladder that will get us all the way up to the sky, you can actually get up on top of the ceiling and replace those light bulbs from up above. Something you don't do in the summertime because it's in the attic. Heading for the attic. We are now above our 99 star field in the audience ceiling. Each one of these stars is actually a light bulb over a hole in the ceiling. The cold fluorescents run really blue, so now the universe is contracting. And the star goes there, and now we have added another point of light in Tampa Theater's ceiling. The fact that this theater in particular is almost entirely intact to day one makes it uh, pretty special. We have the furniture. You know, what the termites haven't taken, we still have. Hopefully you've enjoyed this special behind the scenes look at Tampa Theater and learning some of the secrets that make us the most beautiful and incredible movie palace in downtown Tampa, maybe in the world. But there's really only one way to see Tampa Theater, and that's in person. So check out our website at tampatheater.org for a full list of first-run films, classic movies, live shows, all kinds of special events, and we'll hope to see you here soon.